Morning, everyone. Um, thank you for thank you for joining us. Just to check, is everybody able to hear me? If you cannot hear me, please just let me know. But uh, failing that, we're going to carry on as if everyone's online and able to hear. Well, this is Gear Down. My name is Thane Nimont, and my job is to talk about cutting costs. And over the years, I've realized as a small business owner and as an entrepreneur that I don't look at the glass as if it's half full. In fact, I think I don't look at the glass as if it's half empty. But as an entrepreneur, I like to think of the glass as being refillable. So now based on that, we've got to look at how we can keep on refilling our glasses going through this COVID-19 pandemic and how we can actually keep our business afloat. So my topic is the topic around cutting costs. Are there quick casting, cost cutting wins I can apply today? So the first two principles that I think are so important are number one, whenever you look at cutting costs, be sure that any cost cutting application you implement does not impact upon the quality and service delivery of your product or your service, of course. So for me, you've got to identify where are the strategic places to cut your costs. Secondly, I like to couple cost cutting with a technique of seeing is there a way I can increase my income at the same time. The, the effect of doing both together is actually quite amazing. And if you want a, a number to start with, well, why don't you start with cutting your costs where you can, and we'll talk about that in a moment, by 10% and trying to increase your income by 10%. So, so why that's important is that it's, you're looking at in small bite-sized uh, chunks rather than looking at the whole issue around costs in your business. So that's the first two principles I, I really would like to, to, to emphasize as being very, very important. So how do you go about cost cutting quickly? Well, at the moment, I think we actually have no choice but to look at our costs immediately. And how does one look at those costs? And unfortunately, for business owners like us, it's, it's, there's a bit of admin involved. And the admin relates to putting together a budget of your income and your expenses that you expect for the next three months. I have to work on three months because it's less tedious than working on 12 months and one month, quite honestly, just doesn't work. So do a uh, budget for the next three months. And how you do that is you have a, I have a piece of paper and on the top, I write, these are the expected um, amounts of income that I'm going to get and where I'm going to get them from. So, for example, you might have income coming from sales. You might have income coming from rental. You might have a, a salary that, that comes into your, into your, uh, in your cash flow. And then below that, you itemize each and every single item that your money is spent on on a daily basis. Now, I'm thinking of things like, and we tend to forget these, bank charges, bank interest, water and lights, obviously, your telephone, your staff costs, whether that be the wages and salaries, or uh, plus the URF and the workman's compensation and all those wonderful things that we are compelled to pay on a, on, a, on a regular basis. But it is important that we actually itemize each and every single cost that we have in our business. But can I take it a step further? As a business owner, you are not working in isolation. You also have personal businesses, uh, sorry, big your pardon, personal costs. So I always want you to almost do a second budget, and that is on your personal expenses, you know, the school fees, um, the rent that you pay at home or your bond or your motor vehicle. And what you need to do with those two budgets is sit down with, if you've got a family member or a partner, sit down with the people that are around you 
and decide as a group, as a collective, where it is that you are able to cut costs without harming your business or your credit rating. So that's a very, very important uh, aspect of starting to identify quick cost cutting uh, principles. So, so where do we look? So you might find that you have needs and wants. Now, I think in this time that we're going through now, we've got to focus on what we need for ourselves in our personal capacity as well as in our business capacity. So it's nice to, to want a, a, you know, that fancy car with the star on the back, but maybe you don't need that car right now. Maybe a, 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 a more inexpensive car will be useful. So now we've set out our budget and we've identified what are our needs and what are our wants. So how do we go from there? And this is where we have to be critically honest with each other and yourself and whoever's uh, sitting with you. It might be your accountant, it might be your attorney, it might be your financial advisor, but you need to be very, very honest as to where there are items that you can cut. So let's start with your private budget because I think that's a, a very important part because often business owners are stressing big time in their businesses because they're also worrying about the impact on their personal budget and expenses. So the first thing that I, I did was I spoke to my short-term insurance broker. Uh, if you don't have one, it might be a good idea to find one now or to go online and see where your short-term insurance premiums can be cut. Again, be careful that you don't subject yourself to unnecessary risk by doing that. Because at the end of the day, insurance is really there to cover your risk. But if you are paying insurance on a car that's worth 100,000 Rand and your insurance premium is based on a value of 200,000 Rand, you might find that you'll be able to cut costs there. You might also want to take a bit of risk and say, well, I'll only cover my car for third party fire and theft. So, so have a look at your short term insurance. By the same token, have a look at your long-term insurance. So is your life cover still efficient? Do you still need all that life cover? Do you have disability cover? Uh, is there a way you can cut that cover to a, a minimum? Just be careful of doing that without taking proper advice because, as you know, we all tend to get a bit older and if you're going to cut and reduce life insurance, you might not be able to replace it. So I want to almost say to you that it's imperative in this case to speak to a financial professional when it comes to life cover. Now, what I've found over the years is life insurance, some of the old policies have cash values, uh, whereas the new ones tend to not have those cash values. So have a look at that because you might be able to access that cash in your uh, policies. Then, of course, you'll, you will have um, investments and retirement funding um, have a look at whether you can take a holiday on those premiums or those contributions. Again, you might need the help of a financial professional because you don't want to uh, do a holiday, a payment holiday, and then find yourself with huge disinvestment penalties or costs. So um, just be aware of that. There, are Some of those investments you can stop and delay for a while without any uh, investment costs. So just be aware of those kind of things as well. And if you are um, looking at your business, you can start in the same way. Have a look at your short-term insurance on your business. Speak to your short-term broker, insurance broker. Have a look at those business assurance policies that you have. Uh, are they still relevant? Are they still applicable? Uh, are they possibly been able to be replaced with a cheaper premium that still gives you the same amount of cover. But importantly, as a business owner, very often a lot of our cash is actually held on our shelves. So you might have a lot of stock on your shelf. Have a look at that stock. Is it old stock? Is it about to expire? Is it stock that you're going to be able to sell quickly, even if it means um, taking a bit of a, a knock on your profit margin. Maybe you want to take 
some old stock and package it with faster moving stock. So buy one, get one free type of situation. Um, but the, the one free or the one at a reduced price might be a slow moving stock item. So stock is a very, very uh, important issue when it comes to, to, to your cash flow. Are there businesses that you can barter with? So maybe you can do a deal with a, a supplier where you can barter instead of having cash flow uh, going out of your business. And maybe you can exchange things, you know. Um, so I know, on, for example, on Facebook, there's been a multitude of these um, groups where you can actually barter unused or unwanted items for, for other items that you may very, very well need. Um, can you apply? Do you ask for a discount? So I have this thing with discounts. Um, I always ask for a discount if I'm buying something. Yet if someone asks me for a discount, I get a little bit uh, grumpy and not really happy to give a discount without being uh, involved in some sort of negotiation. So, for example, if I go into a, a store, I'll ask for a discount. And even though I know it's uncomfortable, I mean, my, my wife crawls when I ask for a discount. But, you know, I've saved a lot of money over the years by just biting that little bit of or eating into a little bit of humble pie and asking for a discount. But if you are being asked as a business owner for a discount, just be aware that you can't give too big a discount because not only does it affect your cash flow, but immediately the client's going to say, well, if you can give me such a big, big discount, why did he charge me so much in the first place? So have a look at your discounting strategy. Um, I like to negotiate discounts on the basis that if someone asks me for a discount, I say, sure, I can give you a discount, but then you need to buy two of these products. Or I'll give you a discount, but I'm going to then reduce the time I spend in your business by half an hour or whatever the figure is. So, so have a look at of that kind of uh, issue when it comes to, to cutting, cutting costs. Another way that we can uh, cut costs is by sharing or subletting so if you look at your space where you're working from and it is more than you need, and remember, we don't all need a corner office with a glass window, maybe you can talk to your landlord if you are um, renting or if it's your own property, find someone that is appropriate to share with you so that you can cut those costs so your rental costs can come down. Another cost that I find um, that we can actually and I know we tell this to our kids all the time, switch the lights off. <laughs> Check your electricity usage. I have a client that's a farmer, and all he did was he, he, he restructured the running of his engines and his machinery. So instead of them starting at 8 o'clock in the morning, uh, which is peak time in our area, he started them at 9 o'clock in the morning, and that hour every single day cut his escambol by probably 8,000 rand. So have a look at... The, the utility usage in your business. Also, transport is a huge cost. Um, are you planning your, your routes? Are there two people going into town to deliver a product uh, or a service where one person can go uh, or at a specific time of the day, let's say at 11 o'clock, guys, we are going into town, who needs have documents collected, who needs to have materials collected from the hardware store. So by planning your trips um, and restricting the transport costs, that is uh, another quick way that you can actually cut your costs. And I know this, this, this um, webinar has been sponsored by NetBank Simply Biz, but I also want to say, have you chatted to your banker lately? Have you asked them, is there any movement to reduce your bank charges? Have you renegotiated your interest rate? Those are items, and the worst that can happen is they can say, no, we can't reduce your bank charges or we can't reduce the interest rate. But if you don't ask everyone, there is absolutely no chance that they or people are going to offer you a reduction or of, of costs. The, the, another way that I like to um, 
look at, and this is a bit of a contentious one, but a, a look at costs is have a look at your staff complement. Now, I'm sure there is a, another webinar on uh, staffing and perhaps retrenchments and redundancy. So I think I would just put out there that if you are thinking of reducing your staff or reducing their salaries or their time at work, be sure that you will need to do this properly and in terms of the Rela Labor Relations Act because you don't want to be sitting for hours and hours at the CMA, CCMA because you have not done your staff reductions uh, properly. So it's about managing staff, it's about managing the activities to make sure that you are actually getting what you pay for. So I'll, I'll leave this staff thing at the moment. Telephones. Are you on that amazing te telephone package and you are carrying over minutes, if that's the right word, really, <laughs> on a month to month basis? Is there a way to look at cutting your telephone costs? Uh, do you have a, a system in place where you can be sure that the telephone costs you are paying are actually for business and not for private uh, usage? Is your data being downloaded? Uh, because you're on Facebook or, or, or your staff are on Facebook or Instagram all the time. So um, again, just have a look at those telephone costs. Now this might sound really miserly, but are you throwing all your scrap paper away or are you using them as notepads? So instead of going to buy reams and reams of, of um, paper because you use a lot of paper, Maybe you can staple a pile together and use that as a notebook or a notepad for things to do. I was at a client yesterday and I really had to smile to myself because what he had done is it actually printed on both sides of the paper. So he was definitely making use of paper as a uh, means, as a, as a cost-cutting mechanism. So have a look at those kind of things. Um, you know, it, it may very well be the difference between staying in business and not staying in business. So, again, you know, very often when we have cash flow issues, we want to apply for finance and funding so that we can pour more money into our business to solve that cash flow challenge. Now, I want to almost guarantee you that if you look at the causes of your cash flow challenge, Rather than looking at the symptoms of your cash flow challenge, you may not necessarily need additional finance and funding. Have a look at why your income is, is uh, too little or not enough to sustain your business. Is it a lack of sales? Maybe you need to get your sales up and running. Is, it, is your pricing correct? Now, a lot of this we'll talk about and we've got, I think, a, a download on, on Simply Biz on this essentials for the small business owner where we talk about having a look at why there's a cash flow challenge in your business. Maybe you're making the sale, but you're not collecting the money quickly. So you have a problem with your debtors. Now, now's the time to put a little bit of pressure on those debtors to actually get that money in. Are you taking a deposit? You know, that may be a way to fund yourself. Um, can you arrange with your debtors, to, uh, your creditors, to pay them in 60 days rather than 30 days? So when it comes to finance and, and funding, um, very often the, the person that, is gonna, that you approach will ask you, well, what caused this problem? Is there a way out? So you'll see on the screen I've got um, the four Fs of finance and funding. And, and what you fit, essentially I find is that the uh, first place you start looking for finance is family. Then you go to your friends, then you go to fools, and then you end up going to financial institutions. And really financial institutions are not going to be happy to help you if you don't have proper records. So if you don't have a proper balance sheet, income and expenditure statement for the last two or three years, you're going to battle to get um, funding. Even if you go into the websites, and I did a, a quick search on finance and funding for small businesses on the websites, 
you're going to find part of those application forms are going to request financial statements and financial information. So, yeah, there's a lot of things we can do to cut costs. Just be careful of where you cut costs and be sure that the cost cutting is done in the appropriate place. But we do need to identify and focus in this post-COVID era or during the, the COVID era on where our businesses can survive um, purely by cost cutting. But don't forget, you also have a, an opportunity to re-engineer your business to try and increase the income that you are generating in your small business. So that's me. That's the 20 minutes that I've been designated. If you have any questions, I will go on to the question log and see if there's anything that we can help you with. I know that this has been recorded. So if you want to watch again and drop us an email on the Simply Biz website, you're more than welcome to do that. So I'm just going to check if there are any questions and we can answer those because this is where it ends. So I've got a question from Janet that asks, um, thanks for the question, Janet. It asks, what is the one thing would you say every business should do? So that's a good question, Janet. I think the answer is going to be a answer that most business owners will dread. That is prepare a budget of your income and your expenses for the next, wait for it, 12 months. Why do I do that for 12 months? Well, first of all, my Januaries are very different to my Decembers. So in my business, uh, because I'm a consultant, my Decembers are reasonably quiet because most of my clients are going down to Durban or other places for holiday. But if you're a um, retailer, your December may be exceptionally busy. Now, if you do a cash flow budget for 12 months, and you just keep the numbers the same, the income the same, the expenses are the same, it's gonna be unrealistic. So, uh, you know, because of your um, budgeting for the 12 months, you're gonna know, okay, in February, for example, you may have to pay a bit of VAT. In August, you may have a, uh, a bit of a um, provisional tax to pay. So, so do it on a month to month basis. So I also got a question. Thanks, Michaela. Um, it says, how can we plan long term during this crisis? Is it possible? Thanks, Janet. I, you've actually made the same comment uh, as to who can predict anything. So that is a very good question, both of you. So the way I look at it, and again, bearing in mind that I am a little bit conservative. When I do my predictions, I actually do it in three scenarios. So the first scenario is I look at my income as being the best it can be, and I make my expenses the worst that it can be. Now, that is best case scenario. But then my next scenario is I make my expenses the worst they can be, and I make my income projections the worst they can be. Okay, so now I've got the best and I've got the worst. And then guess what I'm gonna do next? I'm gonna add the two together and do an average. And somewhere between the best projection and the worst projection, you're gonna get the average and your answer is gonna be somewhere there. And what that does for you especially from a cash flow perspective, it actually will give you on a month to month basis what your expected bank balance will be. So you'll know, for example, for, for three months, you might have a negative uh, bank balance, but for the next two months, you'll have a positive bank balance. So in your mind, you can say, well, I'm not going to spend all the, uh, the money in the good times because the bad times are coming. And as we know, they do, do come. So I have another question. I hope that answers uh, your comment, Janet and Michaela. And I've got another question from, from Renee. And she asks, what should I look for 
when selecting a financial advisor for my small business? That's a great question. So, Renee, um, I would almost say what you need to do is look at a team for your small business. So, in my space that I work in and I consult with a lot of small businesses, I have a specific firm of attorneys that I deal with because we all, at some stage in our business life, Renee, will have a situation where we're going to need somebody with legal input. Uh, then your accountant is, is, is a good person to have on your, your team to advise you. And then from a personal perspective, a financial, personal financial advisor, or as they like to call themselves often, personal financial planner um, is important. Now, how to look for that person, and I might stand on a few toes here, but from a financial advisor perspective, I would go onto the website of the Financial Planning Institute of South Africa. That's uh, www.f for Freddie, p for Peter, and i for ian.co.za. And I think there's a tab there, Renee, that will say, uh, find a financial advisor. But the best way, from my experience, to find a good financial advisor is to ask around. Ask, get a referral from your friends. And just as a word of warning, don't go for the financial advisor that promises to double your money in the next two months, because that is not going to happen. So find a financial advisor that is qualified. Um, in personal finance as well, I think in business is good. So uh, you'll find on that website, very often the financial advisors will provide the fields and areas of expertise. Is that good? Good stuff. Any other questions? That looks like uh, Renee was the last one to ask a question. Okay, so from my side, thank you very much for attending. It's been awesome. Uh, I know we've got another one coming up soon. Um, I've been through the workbooks uh, that Simply Biz put out. It's very worthwhile going to read through those assignments and tasks. And um, all the best for COVID uh, and post-COVID. I'm so tired of hearing this, um, you know, the new normal. It is a new normal, but we have to look after ourselves as business owners. You've got to do what you have to do to make your small business survive. And what has been amazing, I've found, is that a lot of small business owners are working together. So maybe collaboration, cooperation is going to be the answer, uh, Michaela. So, um, you know, there's a, a wonderful saying um, in the Eastern Cape. It says, if you want to go far... You must go together. If you want to go fast, you must go alone. So I think this crisis is teaching us all to go together. If that's it from you, thank you very much. And all the very best for the near and the future. Cheerio.